Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today we're going to do some reverse dyeing. So I'm going to start with a black tea. It's been uh, pre-washed and then spun out. It's still barely damp with just plain water. Uh, that's the easiest way I find for doing the folding on these. So I had a meditation and seen this design that I have since named the Black Flame Rainbow. And the first thing I did with it was a big project where I did 30 t-shirts. And the next time I sat in meditation, I almost immediately got the question, well, what about just one t-shirt? Because I know most people don't want to make 30 t-shirts up. So I decided to do a video showing how I could make, how you could make just one t-shirt with this design. So what I'm doing is I'm going to start, like I say, with a black tee that's been pre-washed, it's barely damp, and I'm going to fold it in half diagonally. So I'm grabbing the shoulder up here, I'm grabbing the uh, shirt, the hem down at the bottom, and just picking it up, folding it diagonally. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm going to do two different methods for folding this because after I did the big project then I had another inspiration for folding it a little differently. So we'll get to that next here. But basically what I'm going to do is just accordion fold right up along this edge. This here is the diagonal fold that we did down the middle of the crosswise the t-shirt. So I'm going to do pleats. Uh, oh, they're maybe a, a, an inch tall but that's really to your own preference. Uh, just make sure that they're tall enough so you can tie it off. All right. Now that I have that folded up, I'm going to tie it off. I like kite string, but you can use whatever your personal preference is for tying. So there's my t-shirt and now the next thing I'm going to do is remove color and my preference for removing color is a product called Out White Bright and I found this at Walmart next to the bleach. I, I had looked in the laundry aisle to start with because it says laundry whitener on it but uh, they didn't have it in the laundry aisle but the next aisle over they had the bleach over there and this was right next to the bleach. It comes in a powdered form. So, like I say, that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to get set up here. Okay, we're all set up here. So what I've done is put this rack on an incline. I just used a couple dye bottles that I filled up with water to hold the rack up at an angle. And now what I'm just... I got my water boiling over there. And then I usually let that cool down a little bit. So, anyway, <laughs> so we'll get back to that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is add some white bright to my t-shirt here. Um, I do have uh, a window open here because of the, the dust and stuff. Uh, I would normally wear a mask, but I want to be able to talk to you guys. So I'm not wearing a mask. I am wearing a glove because I want to be able to open some of these creases and let some of that out white bright get down into the cracks. Okay, so once I have the out white bright put on there, then I use water that's about 200 degrees. I typically boil it and then let it cool back down, and when it's around 200 degrees, that's when I use it. So we got our water here, and like I say, this is something that you want to be careful of because you're pouring hot water. You want to make sure that you're away from the splash zone. So I'm going to pour it. I guess I should have left that a little bit higher. But as soon as you start pouring this water on, it starts removing the color immediately. And like I say, this will take a, a couple pours because I want to get this, this water dripping down at an angle and removing the color. That's part of the, the design here. So I just apply a little bit. I guess maybe if I bring that up, I can be more precise with my pouring. So I can pour slowly and see that color coming out. See the water running down here to remove just a little bit more color. So depending on how big you want the, the flames to be, 
is how how far down you go here. Just remember that this is folded in half, so if I have three inches here, there's going to be a six inch space on the t-shirt. All right, now I'm going to flip this over. And yeah, I can see that a little bit of colors come out, but I'm going to add more to the back side now. And I try to add just a little bit at a time so that you can be kind of precise with your pouring and the removal of color. Because with this, it happens almost immediately. And then the nice thing about the out white bright is there's no need to neutralize it. All you have to do is just rinse it really well and then you can soak it in soda ash and add color which is what we're going to do next. Okay, I think that looks pretty good there. And like I say, I will show another method, but for now we're going to go ahead and deal with this one. So what I'm going to do next is just rinse this really well. Uh, I'm not going to try and move the camera over for that. I'm going to leave it tied up and I'm just going to squeeze it and soak it and rinse it until the, the brown water starts stops coming out. Once the water kind of runs clear, then I'm going to soak it in soda ash. And then I'm going to come back and we'll add some dye to this. So stay tuned. Okay, I went ahead and got this rinsed out really good. And then I spun it out so it's just barely damp again. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my soda ash on. This here is just an easier way than trying to dunk the whole thing in a bucket. Because you don't really need soda ash all the way down here on this black part. So I'm just going to squirt it on here. Let it sit for a bit. And then I'm going to spin this out and then it's going to be ready for dye. But like I say, I will let this sit for 20 minutes or so. Okay, and this here is just regular soda ash that I mixed up one gallon with one cup of soda ash and then I just put it into a squirt bottle. Uh, the other thing I will do is put it into a spray bottle in case I need to just spray just a little bit on. But this one here I needed good saturation to get all the way down in there. So let this sit for 20 minutes, spin it out, and then I'll be back to put color on. Okay, so I've let this sit for 20 minutes and then I spun it out <clears throat> to get the excess soda ash out of there. So now it's just barely damp again. And I'm going to go along and add my colors in. I'm just going to do the rainbow and let it drip down. I mean, I'm probably going to saturate anyway. So I have my purple, bluebird, uh, the purple it says plum on it, but it also might be dark purple. I can't remember what I put in there. It's been a while. Bluebird, emerald green, lemon yellow, deep orange, and fuchsia. Those are my colors.
Okay, I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes, and then I'm going to flip it over and touch up where I need to. But I kind of saturated it pretty good there at the beginning, just hoping to get the, the dye down through all of the layers. But also I want that dye movement, which is why I put it on the incline like this. So, we'll come back. Alright, let's flip this thing over and see what we're looking at. Let me wipe this down. Alright, yeah, I can see some of the colors came all the way through, so we're just going to go along and add more color to this. And I like that little bit of movement in there. So I am trying to <clears throat> dribble some of the dye on and let it run down the, the creases here. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good. So what I'm going to do is let this batch for 48 hours and then you'll see the results in about two seconds. Thank you for watching. Good morning and welcome to Hippie Christmas with Mr. Tie-Dye. So, I got the black flame rainbow design that I did. So, let's get this thing opened up. So this is the one that I folded in half diagonally and then I used liquid dye on this. So. There are flame rainbows, rainbow flames in the black. So the black flame rainbow. Anyways, that one looked pretty good. So I'm going to get to the other one. You'll see the results in about two seconds.